Hi everyone, it's Brian here. So I have a revelation that God has been teaching me for the last year or so. But before I share that, let me share a little bit about us. So my name is Brian. Uh, me, my wife, Fran, and our two kids, Levi and Luna, are currently in Arizona. And we are serving and working with a local church. But I have a question. Um, that's a little bit about us. I have a question for you guys. Has God ever put you in a situation where you knew what you needed to happen, where you knew what needed to happen, but encountered consistent resistance at every step of the way. And this is kind of what's been happening with us pretty recently over the past three, four years or, or so as we've been continuing to serve. And, uh, you know, because of that, you know, God has been having this consistent um, teaching moments for me personally uh, that have been teaching me to stay even though it feels a little hard and I want to kind of get out sometimes. Um, so I've been reading in, in, in the Bible and literally anywhere in the Bible where anyone who has been used by God to fulfill God's will has had consistent hardship at almost every turn. Um, it starts with the Old Testament all the way into the New. So no matter where you go, no matter where you read, you are going to be encountering people that are going to be having hardships everywhere. <laughs> um, and so it's it's really interesting. And I wrote down a few things here, so I'm going to read. Uh, so, so how did Noah stand firm when he was probably laughed at for building the ark? Because it wasn't raining, and you're building this boat. I don't even know if they had the word boat. Well, they probably had springs and stuff. But, you know, like, so... And then also, uh, how did Joseph continue to seek God through all the terrible things that he went through, through jail, through, uh, through, through being thrown into prison, through all the, all these things. And then, and then, and then finally being escalated, like how did he continue to seek God through, through that? Uh, how was Moses able to lead thousands of people for 40 years and then be denied going into the promised land? And not get angry or bitter at God, and or not go insane uh, from people before going before being denied by God. Like, like that's incredible. And then, how did Paul or any of the other disciples not quit or get angry at people for everything that happened to them, from jails to beatings to whippings to everything? Like, it's just it's all for following God. Uh, it's just an incredible um, thought in my mind as I continue to think like how do I do this how did they do this so I want to share with everyone what God has revealed to me about contentment and how to stay so we're gonna we're gonna read first uh, Philippians 4 13 and it says I can do all this through him who gives me strength so I've heard this 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 verse expressed a few times as an affirmation to someone whoever whoever reads it. So it's usually an, an affirmation and they're saying things like, I'll just use me for example. Don't worry, Brian, you're strong. So they use the verse and they'll say, you're strong, Brian, because you can do all things. Brian, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. And then they'll usually end with like going into prayer. God, strengthen me. It's so hard. Strengthen me. Um, help me. So I'm not saying that this is a bad thought. It's not unbiblical to pray this. Um, but there's more to this verse or this passage that it, it comes from than, uh, than meets the eye. So we're going to look back. And it, it, when we look back, Paul is expressing to the Gentiles that he appreciates. It says that he's, he's greatly rejoicing. So he appreciates their, their, their concern. But he, was, he wasn't looking for it. And he didn't need it. Uh, because God had shown him, and he says later on, God had shown him how to be content. That he found the secret to being content content. Um, and God had shown him to stay and to, and to continue to persevere. So we're going to, we're going to take that Philippians 4.13, but we're going to go back to, to 10 and read from 10 to 13. So it says, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. And then in verse 12, he says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. So he says here, like, there is a secret to being content 
And then he also says, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And then he answers it with verse 13, which we, we all know. He says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So he says, like, there's a secret. And then verse 13 says, the answer, the, the answer to the secret is this, which you know, doesn't become a secret because it's in, in the Bible. But it says, I can do all things. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And so what Paul is saying here is that he can do all things because he knows Christ, because he trusts God, and he has faith in the Holy Spirit that is alive and working in him. And I know that's, that's a lot to get from that verse, um, but it, it expresses it and says, I can do all this through him, through God, who gives, who gives me strength. And so there's a passage later on uh, in Ephesians 3, 16 um, through, through 21, where Paul is encouraging and explaining this very revelation of knowing Christ so that when Paul or whoever, uh, when he has doubts, when he has worries, when he has any anxieties, or when he's just wondering, I don't know if Paul ever wondered this, I assume he did because he's human, but uh, you ever wonder like, man, is this, is this even worth it? Like, am I even, uh, is all this just going to be for nothing? Um, are all my efforts going to be in vain? Is this even like, you know, so when Paul had these thoughts, or any of us really, uh, we can go back and we can remember that God is still faithful and he's still working in us and through and through us to do his work. So we're going to look at this. Uh, Paul was encouraging the church in Ephesus. I was going to say Galatians there for a second. So church in Ephesus, um, the Gentiles specifically, he was explaining to the, the Gentiles that they are included in God's inheritance and they are heirs along with the Israelites, which is pro which is a very hard thing for Gentiles to understand, I imagine, because this was a very foreign concept. And so let's go in and read Ephesians 3, 16 through 21. And so I, I'm, I'm reading this because this passage explains what it is that Paul is explaining in verse, thir verse 13, I can do all this through him who strengthens me. So it's explaining um, what it exactly means to what he means by through him who gives me strength. So let's read Ephesians 3, 16 through, through 21. It says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And so this passage here, these, these two, these two scriptures, I think I said through 21, but I only went to, uh, to 17, sorry. Um, so these two scriptures explains to us what it means when Paul is saying, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So what that through him who gives me strength means or what it looks like. It, it looks like uh, God's glorious riches strengthening us through his power, through his spirit in our innermost being so that Christ can dwell in our hearts through faith. And so the Holy Spirit strengthens our spirit with power. So it's basically the glue, the bonding that upholds us. It's the, I do a lot of concrete work. So, so it's the rebar, I guess, that like holds it all, 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 all together so that the revelation of Christ can dwell in us. So it holds us together, that, that revelation of him working in us. And so that knowledge of Christ in us reminds us that we're taken care of and that our efforts are not in vain. That is the secret to being content in every situation, just like verse 13 says, that he found a secret to being content in any and every situation. So that is the secret to being content in every situation. It is knowing that God is alive, that God is in us, and that God is working through us, and that he's not going to leave us alone. And he's not going to leave us to our, to our own, own devices because, as probably everyone knows, we are going to self-destruct and we're going to ruin everything. And, and uh, so it's really good that God is with us and that he's strengthening us and that he is going to go ahead of us um, and give us what we need in the moment. So I know, just as Paul knew, that although things might be bleak, or if they aren't, 
because sometimes things could be going really great, or if they aren't bleak, that they will be. <laughs> and it's we're going to have those hard times, and at, and at some point we're going to need to encourage ourselves that God is not done, that He is in us, He is with us, and He is working through us. And uh, so I just want to pray for you guys right now. Let's pray. So if you all can close your eyes, we're going to bow our, our heads and pray. Lord, we thank you for your work in us, Lord. We thank you for your for the salvation that we have through your saving grace, Lord, the work on the cross that you have done for us, Lord, and that you are continuing to not only just leave us alone and be saved, but you're continuing us, to, you're continuing to be with us, you're continuing to instruct us, to guide us, and to strengthen us, and to encourage us, and let us know that you're there, and that you're with us. Lord, we thank you for the work that you're doing in us, and that you're going to do through us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Have a good day.